I'm even call them the best, so I'm going viral with idols. It's so classic, like a set of CDs and vinyls. You already know it's top of my show. Right. On everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Quarantine and Rap. I go by the name of Ray Pearson, and big ups to my amazing co-host Joe Milos, who's not able to join us tonight, taking care of some personal um situations. But this is a this is a, uh, a dope ass um, episode for me because I came across this MC while exploring FagoLovers.net. Um, being someone who listens to Twisted, I was like, okay, who is this that they signed? So I believe it was the DOA freestyle that I came across. And since then, you know what I mean? I've been a fan of this dude's music. Um, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Well, right. without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quarantine and Rap, Lex the Hexmaster. What up, what up, what up, everybody? How the fuck is everybody doing out there? Ray Pearson, what up? Thank you for having me on the show, bro. I appreciate right. it, man. This is this is definitely something I wanted to um I wanted to to, to happen um from coming across you online to actually meeting you at the, the Grand Mode Cypher, the bars in the Bronx. Also, shout out to them. So homie. Going all um, the bars in the Bronx, um, event and in, in, in obviously in the BX. Um, Lex, when did your musical journey begin and who were your influences? Well, I mean, I, I've been doing this music shit, man. Well, like, you mean like in general or like professionally? Um, in general, I uh, in general, man, I, I want to rap at first, man, because I thought I was gonna get all the girls and shit, man. You know, the rappers get all the girls and shit. You know, I wasn't the most popular kid in the, in the classroom, you know what I mean? So, um as I started listening to it more and more, um, I come from the age of freestyling bars. You know what I mean? My brother, my older, I'm the youngest of two boys. So my older brother was like, this motherfucker, you give him a topic, he could just go in on it. You know what I mean? And I always admired that. So growing up in, in New York City in the 90s, you had to have fucking bars, you know? And I grew up in the Puff Daddy era, the fucking, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the shiny suit era. So I was like a little more intrigued with that. But as I got a little bit deeper into it, you know, um, I got. You know, I think. I think it all changed once. Once I got into DMX music, dog. Real talk. And I ain't just saying that because DMX is not here with us no more. Rest in peace, DMX. But I think it all changed once I got into his music because now he's showing the street from a whole different light. We're talking about shiny suits and and girls and champagne and all that shit like that. But we took my Robin niggas, and these are the people that I grew up around. You know what I'm saying? I didn't grow up around those shiny suit motherfuckers or no fucking, you know, pretty boys and all that shit. So uh, DMX, I started relating to him a little bit more. You know, and. and um, that, that that made it more real to me. That made it more uh more and more authentic to me. And and Nas, of course, you know, because I'm from Astoria, I could like walk to Queensbridge from here, you know what I mean? And um just just like MCing. So as I got more into, and more into the fucking music scene, it's like, okay, I gotta prove myself more. And of course we all fall off, you know, life happens, jobs and shit like that. And that that kind of that kind of threw me off for a little while. But um no nah, man, I've been doing this music shit forever, man. You know? Um Professionally, I would say going on five years now. Because mm. I got down with Magic Ninja. I, I came straight out the street, fresh off the street. First tour, first everything. Never been to fucking the West Coast. All that shit was like super new and super cool to me. You know? And yeah. um, that's how long I've been actually doing this shit, you know, for a living, you know? And do you remember the verse or song you heard that made you actually want to pursue music? Oh, wow. This is a good interview. Thank you for asking good fucking questions. Real talk, because everybody's like, oh, who's your inspiration? Oh, yeah, cool. No doubt. But no, the first song I ever heard that wanted me to fucking make me want to rap? Ever? Probably Victory. He did it in fucking Biggie Smalls on a on No Way Out album. Hot fucking hottest fucking song on the whole fucking album. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, probably that song, man. Word and and from there, like I first I wrote my first rhyme to that beat. Don't ask me to kick it because I don't fucking know it, you know. But 
That was my first shit right there, you know? Word. <laughs> I haven't thought about that in years either, man. Thank you for asking that. Like, I'll go back and listen to that fucking song too. I have none of my recordings that I did when I was that age either. Because if you remember, man, you grew up around that time. Those was tapes, man. We have no music apparatus to listen to tapes with at all anymore. You know, so that's just lost the fucking history. If you can find them shits, man, I you you you'll be a fucking millionaire. You know what I mean? Well, if you can find those, you'll probably be a hit out on your life. My music was that terrible. I don't want nobody to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna do that like that, like that. You know? Um, good question, man. Good question. Or, being someone that signed um to Twisted's Magic Ninja Entertainment, dumb yeah. used um they used to be signed to Psychopathic. Um, how would you define the genre of music you create? Music I create? Yeah. Or, or like the juggalo scene in general. Me? General. Yeah, general. You, your music, how would you define it? Like, under what category? Ah, oh, man. I don't even know if you can call it wicked shit, man. Like, but I... I used to call it monster music, but then my man Rockness Monster started calling his shit Monster Nation. You know, the, shout out to Rockness Monster, my favorite rapper. Don't tell nobody. If anybody want to know. Uh, get into him if you ain't into him yet. You into Rockness Monster? No. Oh, man, dog, you missing some fucking wordplay of a century right there. But anyway, we ain't going to ride his nuts and nothing like that. Um, I don't know. Man. It's not super it's hardcore, dude. Yeah, because you have underground, you have um what, what would they call it? Um gore. Yeah, um, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? A little bit, yeah. So like that's why I was darker music though. That's the thing. I've always done darker music. And if you'd have met me in 2013, 2014, I wouldn't even know what a juggler was. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't I was wasn't really in the scene. I was already painting my face and shit like that. So um once, once I became privy to what was going on, there was a whole culture behind this. It was like, oh, shit, you know, I fit right in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Uh, my music, I don't think, was was uh, very widely accepted at first due to the fact that I do have a more complicated New York lyrical kind of style, and not everybody can keep up with that, you know? Um, but um, I did have to expand at some point because, you know, New York don't got no love for its own artists. You know, let me mute this TV for me. You know, as many artists in New York that I've reached out to, um, so many of them have been, uh, what I feel is intimidated by my style or intimidated by my wordplay word or even the way I look, these glasses and shit, you know what I'm saying? Trying to keep away from the pandemic and shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, feel like, I feel like there's a lot of intimidation going on and a lot of people in New York don't really um, give each other a chance, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of cutthroats and shit like that. So I'd be like, fuck them niggas, you know what I'm saying? If you're not going to accept me, I'm going to fucking just run the whole fucking city, you know what I'm saying? And ain't nobody in the city right now fucking with what I'm doing. So can I categorize it? No. Um, can I put a word on it? No. I guess I guess for every song, there will be one person who's going to like that song or five people that's going to like that song. So to put a cap on it or put a word on it, I feel like all that's going to do is when a person is looking through genres of music and they like pop music and they see hardcore, they're like, oh, I'm not giving it a chance. Or they like hardcore music and, 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 and they don't like pop music and, and it's in the pop section. They're like, I don't listen to that. Uh, even though I know it's impossible to release music without a genre, I don't know what genre I would categorize it in. That, I would leave that to the fans, you know? Word. And you said that you were, um, you were, you had started painting your your face before um, you knew about Juggalos. Yes. What inspired the face paint? Well, to be more, you know, um, theatrical, you know what I mean? To be more dramatic, you know, um, to, to add attention. And also... Uh, one of the main, I mean, there's a whole story behind that too. That, that's gonna have to wait for my book for that. But uh, there's um, again, you live it, you live, you right over across the water, man, in Jersey, man. You know, you throw a fucking quarter, you're gonna hit five niggas that rap. You know what I'm saying? So what's gonna separate this guy from that guy? You know what I'm saying? Regardless of how good this guy is, um, I've done shows. I, I've done shows in, in in certain parts of the city, and um, what happened is people might not always like the song. People might not always like the show. They're going to remember that one fucking guy. I look different from everybody else. See what I'm saying? That's going to, that's, that, that's what's, that's what's going to help us stand out. So that was one of the main reasons too. And um, yeah, man, just um, dramatization, you know, to, to, to raise, to raise questions like that. So people would ask the question and, and I'd be able to tell the story or um, to, to, to raise interest or, or to just not be forgotten. People's like, Oh shit. 
who the fuck is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Now they get roped in and they love it. Word. And um, prior to signing to Magic Ninja, were you always a fan of Twisted? No. No. It was, it was uh, that, that, that right there, actually, to be honest, that was the reason why they signed me. Because there were so many who were, you know, I guess sending in demos or sending in, you know, music and stuff like that or submitting music and stuff like that who were, people have a tendency to try to sound like their favorite rappers. You know what I'm saying? Even whether it's consciously or subconsciously, you know? And, and um, the, the point the, the, the point of Magic Ninja is to expand and start hitting other, hitting other markets and other avenues. And this is where people like Lex come in, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't so immersed in the culture that I was trying to be like everybody else and just a, excuse me, just a carbon copy of everything else. They're like, oh, this guy's original, this guy's from New York, this guy can bring in a whole new demographic. And that's exactly what I've been doing over the past five years. Mm. And um, what was what was the what what was the moment that led you to link with Twisted? Um, signing you. Please rephrase the question. How did you link with Twisted? Um, leading up to the signing. Oh, okay. Um, well, I told you when I started getting once I started, you know, realizing that there, that this was a culture and 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 so many people was like showing me so much love. And sharing my music and 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 being so, and becoming so dedicated, and I had people doing fan art and all this stuff like that, and it was so cool. I ended up loving the culture. You know what I'm saying? So as I dug deeper and deeper into the culture, you know, I have found these guys. You know, I sent them some music. Um, yeah, enlightening hit man. Of, of all the people who've been on fucking tour their whole life, and then you know had. Spotify, I didn't even have Spotify, none of that shit. Like I was straight off the motherfucking street, you know what I mean? Um, they fucking chose me, man. You know what I'm saying? And I and I and I chose them also, you know. So um yeah, um we we was me and my homeboy was in the crib drinking 40s and shit, chilling, playing Xbox. And um I got a I got a um a message. I had been messaging back and forth with who I would find out to be monoxide. Um, and it was like, yo, you want us to fly? You, you want us to fly you out to Detroit for a meeting? I was like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, my man was like, yo, listen, man, we ain't doing shit else. Fucking go, dog. See what they talking about. I was like, all right, cool. So I got there, got to the office. I was very impressed, seeing the warehouse and all that shit like that, and we chatted. And we talked, talked to what was required of me. I talked to what was required of them. And um, they was like, yo, you want you want to work for Magic Ninja? I was like, hell yeah. He was like, are you gonna be the first fucking artist on Magic Ninja? Which was a blessing and a motherfucking curse at the same time. Because my I'm the king of bad timing. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm the person who fucking walks in, in the middle of a nigga getting his dick sucked. I'm like, oh shit, I was looking for the scissors, my bad dog. You know what I mean? I'm the king of perfect, bad fucking timing. So I was the first signing, nobody knew who I was. Maybe a little bit less than a year after me being announced. This is when the whole thing popped off between the two labels. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like a lot of the fans that I could have reached, I didn't because there was so much side taking. We're not going to get into all that either. You know what I'm saying? But there was so much side taking that, you know, I, I feel like it hindered me a little bit. But I'm definitely breaking ground. Never got involved in all that bullshit. And I'm still here, man. You know what I mean? Word. Um, for... For, all right, wait, no, before I even ask the question I'm about to ask, um, being an artist who got the chance to travel and perform, what yeah. has been probably like one of the highlights from your performances or where you travel to perform that when you sit back and you think about it, it's like, yo, like, wow, you're like, I really performed out there. Probably Worcester, Massachusetts was one of the biggest shows. Um one of the, one of the, one of the dope like one of my dopest experience. I've had so many, man. I've had um, I've had, I can tell you stories. I've the experiences are so they vary so much. Okay, I was in I was on stage at, in Sorge, Illinois, one time, right? Rocking, rocking, rocking. And you know how people crowd surf? It was a dude crowd surfing in a fucking wheelchair, bro, and they carrying this motherfucker through the fucking crowd. I'm like, that was fucking super crazy. Super fucking crazy. Um, Worcester, Massachusetts, just fucking live. Like, there's been a lot of shows that I've played that fights have broken out because of the content of the music and the energy of the music. That, that has happened a lot. I've seen people's nose get broken, elbows. Um, 
I was on stage in, in Albuquerque, New Mexico one time. It's a crazy story. I was on stage in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I used to always perform with a hoodie on, hood on, paint on. I don't know how I used to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? I used to lose mad weight doing that shit. I need to start doing it again. So I'm on stage and I just start getting flustered, like super fucking hot. And I realize, oh shit, I think I'm having an anxiety attack. Plus, you know, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the fucking altitude is like 12,000, 15,000 fucking feet in the air. So the, the oxygen there is way thinner than it is here. So if you, I don't know, do you drink? Yeah, here and there. Okay, so that one shot here is worth like three shots in Albuquerque. Because the oxygen in your blood is not circulating. You're not used to this shit. Okay, so I'm on stage and I'm getting it, right? Then it was the same way. So all of a sudden, I can't fucking breathe, right? I'm, I'm losing my shit. I'm sweating. I got sweat in my eyes. I'm faint. Paint is running down in my fucking eyes. I go to my man, Jim John. I go, Jimmy, I'm not okay. I think I'm about to pass the fuck out. He was like, yo, take your sweat off. Yo, cool off for a second. All of the music is playing. I'm still trying to rap and all that shit like that in between songs and I'm fucking up. So I take my sweat off. Right? I got a shirt on. All the fucking chicks in the fucking room went crazy, bro. I was like, you know what? This is going to be a part of my show from now on. All the anxiety went away, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, Lex becomes super sexy. I'm like, yeah, whatever. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the highlights, too, right there, man. Just, you know, it, 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 it's just crazy, man. I was in, I think, Oklahoma one time. I was so fucking wasted. I'm like, yo, man, I'm not even putting my shoes on because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, habitual shoe taker offer. Like, I'll sit and take my fucking shoes off anywhere in a car, fucking Uber, anywhere. That's somebody's crib at the dinner table at a restaurant, anywhere. Right? So I'm like, man, I ain't putting my fucking shoes on. And I was fucking up so bad. I was slipping, you know, the stage is smooth. I was slipping, almost falling and shit, and I'm drunk. Just so many different fucking, um, different experiences, man. I've had people jump on stage. I've pushed people, people off of stages. Um, I was in New Orleans one time and like where the stage was, the entrance to the stage, there was a bathroom right behind it. And anybody who's ever toured with me or done shows with me know that I get nervous before I do sets. So I have shit always before I go to set. So there's a bathroom right behind the fucking stage. And thank God for the cordless mic. They're like, yo, you got to go on right now. That's how these shows are. You got to go on right now. So like, all right, give me the mic. I'm going to go use the bathroom. Just let the music fucking play. So I'm sitting on the motherfucking toilet, dude. And I'm like, everybody having a good time out there? You're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. Let this shit out, bro. I'm taking a shit with a mic in my hand. A lot of people don't know that. If they, if they was at that show, they'll be like, oh, shit, I was there. I remember that. Yeah, just we just had some crazy days, man. You know what I'm saying? Word. Yeah, it's funny as shit. <laughs> Every day is different, man. Every day is an experience. You know what I'm saying? Every single day. Yo, for those who are unaware, what is Shadow Army? Shadow Army is an underground network of law-abiding citizens, criminals, and thieves who are working for a common goal. Are there any uh, are there any other artists a part of Shadow Army? Yeah, yes, I got this one kid I'm working with, um, Lakota Skulls. Shout out to my man LA Coda. Word up, he's out there in, um, in the Dakotas, Native Cat. Word up. Um, as of right now, him, we got my man Kid Savage. But Kid Savage, you know, life is happening for him right now. He just had a new baby. Uh, um, right now, yeah, that's, that's that's really it, man. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to take on too much. I, I hate to take on too much. I hate to take on too much without something to give. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to join my organization or be a part of my organization, or our organization, I should say, it's really not even just me. But if you're going to join our organization, we want something to be able to offer you, not just like, oh, yeah, rep our shit. And we'll just chat you out of interviews and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we want something to something tangible, something you can do for yourself. You know, just like I got on Magic Ninja and I could, you know, I can I can go on tour and I could do shows. This is what I want to do for these younger people because um, there's a lot of fucking jewels out there, man. There's a lot of diamonds out there, bro. There's a lot of people like you, bro. Like, I had never heard of you. And then when I heard of you, I'm like, I'm actually, I'm actually a fan of your fucking music, dude. Real talk. And I say that publicly. I ain't gonna say it when we by ourselves and shit. I was gonna say on the interview I like your shit, but I ain't wanna sound like a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I fuck with your shit. Like your shit is fucking dope, bro. And I kept giving you props. Like when you when you left, when we met the ground on cipher, I thought to myself, like, damn, I hope it wasn't riding any dick or nothing like that, bro. I kept giving you props and shit. Like, yo, man, fuck with your shit. But that's me though. 
You know what I'm saying? People always say like, yo, Lex, you know, you, you too humble, man. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing, though. No, you not at all. It's, I, it's, it's, no such thing. it's no such thing as a bad thing. If you meet a nigga whose music you like, I'll tell him, yo, I think this shit is dope. I'm a fan of your shit, bro. You think I'm this and that and this and that. Nigga, I could bump your shit, bro. You know what I mean? And that's I appreciate that. I'm a fan of so many people that I've met. They don't even fucking know. They're so excited to see me. I'm excited to fucking meet them. You know what I mean? Word up. Word up. And, and like, yeah, no, like I was saying, I appreciate that. And, and, and that's something that... um. I don't think happens too often because I think a lot of artists they they get stuck in their their ego. It's like you know, like it's you know, it doesn't hurt to give someone props who deserves it. Like I think throughout time I've grown to loving music right. itself because music is there for you through the good and the bad, the ups and the downs. So it's like I'm a fan of music. Like my younger brother said, "Real Ray," he's like, "Ray, why you keep?" posting people's music that I don't post you it's not even that I, I if i love it why not say something right i'm not doing right. it to try to get your attention to like oh shit now that i got your attention it's like it's like them fake ass comments right that, that oh, you yeah. get on an instagram post right right so it's it's not it's none of that it's like yo like this was a fire ass it was a fire ass production or the you know the, the production went with the the, the the vocals and so I put it out there. I'm not doing it for any try any type of bait. Nah, it's, I love music and I came across something through a shuffle. And right. yo, how, and when I when I look into it, it's like yo, it's just been two two years old. Where the hell was I for two years? And that's me right, right. Ex- expanding my my ear so that I don't only get stuck to what I normally listen to. And so that just introduces me to newer artists. Right. And right. if I get I mean, the and, chance I mean, to... And yo, it, it doesn't... Like, liking another artist doesn't take nothing away from you being dope. I know my shit is dope. You know what I'm saying? I know my shit is fire. So it, it doesn't... I don't feel like it takes away anything from me telling another artist that he's fucking dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, you telling me, like, yo, Lex, I like your shit. Does that make you any less of a fucking fire-ass artist? Nah, it doesn't. That's some insecure shit. People like that. It was like, no, I don't want to say no. That's some insecure shit, bro. That's some scary shit. And it's like, I don't want to get this nigga too much props because he might take my shine and people are not going, people are going to like him now. They're not going to make it. That's whole shit, bro. That's whole shit. You feel like a nigga nice? Tell him, bro. I tell you, yo, I feel like your shit is dope, bro. And if I can do more for you, you will definitely be a part of the Shadow Army shit. Work. Like signed and fucking sealed. Cause I feel I feel like I got that much fucking faith in you, dog. But for what you're doing right now, man, you 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 making your tracks right now, bro. You are fucking getting your bones and you're doing your fucking thing, dog. Just just to fucking persevere on what you got, man. You're independent right now. Yeah. Do 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 what you gotta do, bro. That independent shit is very underrated. You're like, nah, you the label, man. You the label. You kind of don't these days. No, you don't. You really don't. No. All you got to do is stay in people's face, stay relevant. And, and, and that shit will start building up. That shit will start building up. You know what I'm saying? The label is the, 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 the quick way of getting things. You know what I'm saying? But when you get it on your own, they're not taking nothing away from being assigned to a label. You know what I mean? But when you get it on your own, you're like, yo, man, this is my shit. I don't want to buy nothing. I could do my own motherfucking thing. I can say what I want. And, and so can I. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, as long as you know the, I mean, you know? yeah, if the situation makes sense, then, you know, why not? But for now, it's you know what I mean? Ain't nobody. I ain't signing nobody. That's, that's just what it is for now. Be glad though, man. Be glad because a lot of these guys. I mean, the underground is good. You know what I'm saying? The underground is dope um, for the most part. But a lot of these major label guys, man. I don't even know what these guys be doing, man. Like some of these guys, the label is not gonna sign a, a guy. The big labels, the major labels, is not gonna sign a guy. Unless he's doing like millions of views already. You know what I'm saying? Millions of streams already. But now the ultimate question, the ultimate question that, that they've been plaguing the minds of men for thousands of years, right? If I'm getting millions of streams on my own, if I'm getting millions of views on my own, why the fuck am I going to sign to your label for, man? To say I'm on a label? I don't know. I mean, I'll make this. It's to feed the ego. I mean, yeah, yeah, 
Let's, I'm gonna start recommending you for interviews. If you don't mind. Say that one more time. I said I'm gonna start recommending people for your interviews and, and sending me away if you don't mind. Oh yeah, no, no. Listen, man, I'm always I'm always open to 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 networking with new artists. That's always been my thing. Um, I've never been one to, and I think a lot of people got this this thing that um it's always combative or it's always this lyrical miracle of he's trying to get on the track with me to try to kill me. Nah, man, because at the end of the day, we gotta put out something fire. I've always right. been one to for 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 unity. Um right. I think they they hear they 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 hear what the pen can do. It's just I think it's an intimidation, but it's that's not that's not what it is for me. I, I just want to put out something fire on both parts. Let's let's burn the streets up. Right. I'm not stuck right. on this this. I mean, it's healthy, um, in a way, but we're in a position right now where that competitiveness, leave it for the majors we need to put on and you know i mean not everybody has that mentality so if you want to send artists my way to whether you know, listen to him and if you think he's dope get him on your show bro you got all the you you don't the green light is there right right i mean go because everybody i mean it's so many dudes like we just said man so many dudes out here that's fucking dope but they just need that shot. They just need that extra push. They just need that extra couple of listeners, man. And I don't mind that, bro. Like, I love that. Because I remember being in that position. I remember being that guy. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the higher up is just like, oh, man, fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? And then you can sound with a label. Everybody's super cool now and shit. But fuck all that, man. There's so many dudes out here that's dope. That's the only way that music is going to keep evolving. With new sounds, new ears, new new genres, new fucking new ideas, man. We can't have the same motherfuckers running the game for the next 40 years and shit like that. Man. That's not the way it's supposed to go. That's not the way it's supposed to go. Fuck that shit. You gotta Word. fucking regret, man. You know what I mean? Word. Um from Party Castles um episode one to episode two, Haunted Mansion, to your new releases, Thriller and now Closed Minds. Where do you find the inspiration to keep creating music? I think I just love doing it, man. I think I just love doing it. Maybe it's that ego thing. Like, ask anybody around me to tell you, like, every song I do is my new favorite song I ever did in my life. Like, oh, it's the dopest song I ever did in my whole life. You know what I'm saying? So I always, I'm always trying to top that. I'm always trying to, um, like, oh, if they're going to like this, then they're going to love that, you know? Um, just, um... I just, I just love doing it, man. I've never been good at anything else. You know what I'm saying? I've never been good at sports and shit like that, man. I never, I never went to gym class. Uh, I, I'm at a ninth grade fucking mathematics level. Like, I'm not the smartest motherfucker in the world. You know what I'm saying? So, I just, that's just, that's what I do, and that's what I love doing, man. And um, I love creating, and and I love people's reaction to it when they hear it. And um, I love the way that, that, that people tell me that they make it feel, make them feel when they hear it. And, um, how it makes me feel when I hear it, because by the time you hear the song, I already listened to it 10 million times, and I'm already a super fan of it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I just love doing it, man, you know? Word. And being an independent artist, what are some difficulties that you, even you still face being independent? Uh, I guess people don't people don't take you as seriously. You got a lot more to prove as an independent artist. Um, um, you got to work double time for everything. Um, you definitely get to enjoy the fruits of your labor, of course. But again, you have to work double time, and um, um, a lot of the responsibilities that 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 other people take over, you have to take over for yourself. And um, even for those who are signed to labels, why I think that that fails a lot. People that get signed to labels is because they have this idea that the label is supposed to take care of every single aspect of an artist's life. All you're supposed to do is write rhymes. No, I do a lot of boring shit. I do a lot of emails. I do a lot of merch approvals. I do a lot of cover approvals. I got to do a lot of fucking paperwork. I got to write out lyrics. I got to do all of this extra shit like that. I have to keep myself relevant as well as produce music. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we can make music, you know, but stuff like this. this. This is keeping yourself relevant. Nine doing no interviews man just wait for the song to come out you'll see what happens you know what i mean like all of this stuff this is this is literally our job it becomes your fucking job like it becomes what you think about all day long it comes and, and this is and this is where the music comes from you know what i'm saying 
I love when I get a new batch of fucking beats. The beats is crazy. I'm just going in on them. You know, uh, uh, you're um, you're, you 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 don't have anybody there to dictate what you do. Now, some people say that that's that's a good thing, and for some people though, that's a bad thing. Some people need to be told what to rap about. Some people need to be directed on what kind of beats to you. Some people need to hook from. But some people need fucking lyrics written for them. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's the difference between an artist and an entertainer. You got a lot of entertainers out here, which not everybody's an artist. You know what I'm saying? Some people may look the part, but don't got the talent for it. So yeah, you don't have the option of, I don't feel like writing a song, write a song for me. I, I don't feel like writing this hook, write this hook for me. You don't have that option. Um, if your song is whack, it's whack. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing that anybody can do to push it, or we don't get a million spins on the radio every night. So hypnotize motherfuckers into liking our shit. So they gotta they, they gotta knock the first time they fucking hear it. You know what I mean? Word. Right. Do you prefer working on um a body of work versus singles? Yes. I prefer albums. Yeah. Cause at least I can get a with an album, you get a complete thought and you and you can you can you can vibe off of that that kind of that realm, you know what I'm saying? With singles, it's just like kind of like shooting all over the place and shit like that, you know. But with the um, with an album, yeah, I, I'd rather work on an album than than than, than just singles. You know what I'm saying? That's that, my, that's 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 the world right now. The singles. My bad. Can you say that one more time? Uh, I was saying. Uh, what, what was the last thing you heard? Oh no, your your internet went out real quick. Uh, what was the last thing you heard? Um, I can't even pick up. Okay. Um, I, I I would rather work on um albums, bodies of work than singles. You know what I'm saying? Um, because like I said, singles are uh, album is 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 a, is a complete thought. You know, but singles are just kind of like shooting all over the place in the dark. And then you got some people who play it cheap and just like put out mad singles and like, oh yeah, here's the album and you didn't heard everything on it. But I do like putting together records because it's a complete thought. It's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's something to follow behind, and it's a lot easier than um than just shooting in the fucking dark. You know what I'm saying? Where for the, like when it comes to independent artists, right? And you're you're a New Yorker, so I'm pretty sure you've seen this. Because I've seen it every time I go to Manhattan. You got um, artists out there who are still, you know, with CDs, right? And maybe, you know, the CD is something like it's like a collectible. And, you know, CDs, vinyls, they're still popping outside of this tri-state bubble we live in. Right. What a, like, when you see that, like, if you could give that artist a piece of advice to better invest their money aside from cds maybe like flyers with the qr code like what would you tell these artists that are out there still putting in the footwork that an artist should be doing i would tell them that everything is digital now man not that you're wasting your time but like like you said uh, people still do put out cds and stuff i still put out cds you know but um a lot of those are collectibles like i gave i gave a cd to my man in the hood one time Right, since I've been with the label, I gave I gave I gave a CD to my man, and um, yo, like three months later, I'm like, you check that shit out. He's like, I don't have nothing to check it out on. I don't want a fucking CD player. Remember, cars used to come standard with fucking CD players and shit. You know what I mean? Now, it, it, none of that works anymore. You know what I mean? So I would say, go, go. Everything is digital, man. Invest your money into some digital promotion. Don't go buying no views. Don't go buying no fucking subscribers. But everything, uh, go into some digital promotion. Find some fucking playlist to put your music into. Um, um, find some authentic niggas to be around. You know what I mean? Find some some honest people to be around. People who want to invest in you also. And investing in something is not even always money. Invest in something that someone can be their time or their interest. You know what I'm saying? Or helping you share shit. Um, it's not really expensive. If you're making good product, it's not really expensive to move the product. But the product can move itself. You know what I'm saying? Niggas been on the block before. You know what I'm saying? This work going to sell itself, bro. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and what would you change about the current state of hip hop? I would take it back to when people bought CDs and shit, <laughs> and fucking t-shirts and shit. Yeah, I love that shit. You know what I mean? Like I love going and buying the fucking 
the Dark and Hell is Hot album and reading the booklet and shit and buying a Nas album and reading the fucking the credits and some some you remember back in the day some some CDs used to have the lyrics written and the shit and all that like I, I, I that's what I would bring it back to. if I could I would yeah I know I, that's definitely like people don't understand but that was an art that was lost man because right. I I know that feeling like when you listen to um Hard Knock Life no no not um the life times of sean carter right um and you hear that intro hit and you're looking through the booklet it just goes with it right like right. i wish i wish i can come across the individual whether i don't know if it's man or female the individual responsible for the hot 97 volume cds oh man the mixtape shit and all that yo you knew you knew you had to get to the bootlegger Right. Um, when that when that new month came because you wanted to see what was on that hot 97 CD. Right, right. And that was big shit. It was that was big shit to be yo to be on them shits. Like, yo, my man is on that shit. That's big shit, bro. That's not little nigga shit. So um, yeah, man. Oh, DJ Clue and all those motherfuckers, man. That was DJ Who Kid and all those motherfuckers, man. Like, I used to wonder how did they make money off this shit, dog? Like every bootlegger in the world got this shit, but how the fuck did they make bread off this shit, you know? Yeah, like that's that's my thing. Like I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, and then it's crazy because all this time throughout all the years, not not up until recent, but when I actually found out, how ninety seven had nothing to do with them CDs. I'm like, what? Yeah, they didn't. They were just putting their name on the shit and just saying it would sell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, fucking smack DVDs, bro. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's the days, bro. They will never understand that feeling, dog. Chilling with your homeboys, smoking fucking weed, and the fucking brand new fucking smack, and then Jada Kiss coming up next, and fucking sm- uh, fucking fabulous coming up next, and you know what I mean? Then the then the battle at the end and shit. Oh, like, man. come on, bro. Do you have a favorite battle from them it, DVDs? Bro. Huh? You have a favorite battle from them DVDs? I think um, two, two. I got two. I got Mook versus um, Lux. Mm. It was in the Dr. J's on 125th, and I got um, Jin versus Verse. Mm, oh, remember Jin versus Verse? Yeah, this was Jin versus Verse, but his last verse was trash. I'm like, oh shit, who is this Chase nigga? This thing is dope. Yeah, Jin, I'm, I feel bad for Jin. I'll add you. Did you watch the doc, the Rough Riders documentary? Um, which one? The one that came out with years ago? Uh, yeah, the one, the one that just came recently came out, like like earlier this year or last year. Not fully. Well, they, they talked about Jim and when, what happened with Jim because niggas was the streets was feeling Jim. You know what I'm saying? But Jim came out right around that time that download shit started coming out. You know what I'm saying? And that shit fucked up his sales and it looked like he flopped and he got dropped from a label. Mm. You know? That shit is sad, bro. You know? A dope fucking artist who who, who could have had a fucking chance, you know? Niggas like um who came out around that time? Saigon came around that time. Saga so got one of the dopest fucking songs on the Smack DVD. Um, BD Seagull, one of the dopest Smack fucking um, freestyles and shit, man. These guys are crazy, dude. That's when you didn't have bars, bro. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. Go up, bro. I think my you know? I, I think my favorite battles from from the Smack DVD was on um, one Mook and Lux, um, yeah. but also on um, Mook and Party Arty. Yo. That's over. That's right over on one twenty fifth. Also, bro. Yeah, Party yeah. Audi got off. I think it said when you was in diapers, I was on Rikers, rhyming with wipers. I'm like, oh, this old nigga's killing me right now. <laughs> he was killing him. He killed it. He killed it. I, I feel like he won that. I feel like he won that. I feel like I feel like I feel like Lux won against Mook also. Yeah, a lot of people. A, a lot of yeah. people would yeah, say yeah. that. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't really like. Um, I'm not gonna say I don't like Murder Mook, but nah, I, I just I like Lux better. You know what I'm saying? Lux, Lux battle was better. Um, they had a couple little niggas on there, so I forget the little nigga from Philly. That little nigga was burning shit up too. What's his name? I think he's dead now though. <laughs> what was the little nigga name from Philly? Um the be... nigga in the park, some shit like that, huh? Was it no, nah, it wasn't Reed Dollars. Maybe Reed Dollars, maybe. He's not battling no more. I don't know if he's in jail or if something happened. I don't want to speak deaf on him if he didn't die, but I, I thought I heard that the nigga died or some shit. Word. But, yo, a lot of new niggas was coming out, man, on Smack, dog. And you know what? That was the only way to get to the streets, bro. 
and everybody was fucking with the Smack DVDs, bro. Like, who ever thought of that? And then Smack made a way for all kind of other shit. Remember, fucking what? What else? What else started coming out after Smack started coming out? Um, fucking Fed started coming out. All kind of shit started coming out. But Smack definitely, um, that was definitely a part of hip hop history right there, man. That will never get back, you know. Word. Um, Thriller is out. Closed yeah. Mind is dropping with you and um Jamie Mad Madrox. I'm saying his name right, right? Jamie Madrox. Yeah. Madrox. Um, who produced Closed Minds? Poetic. Poetic on the beats. Word. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like, uh, he sent me this beat a long time ago, man. And I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna get Jamie on this shit because Jamie is a very fucking lyrical guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna dance with him on a fucking song one day. I wanna, I wanna get busy with him on a song. And um, and and this fucking song came out. It's just me and him on it. We've never done a song just me and him on it before. So this one is gonna be. I think people's gonna be really feeling this one right here, man. Really feeling this. I mean, if right. it's anything like the the preview that you dropped, man, I'm all for it, bro. Yeah, it's it, y'all. I'm telling you, it's bars, dude. Like you, you're gonna be one of the few people who can appreciate this shit. Like, oh yeah, this is bars. This is not just a bunch of fluff. You know what I'm saying? A lot of fluff be out there. And you know, sometimes we gotta do the crowd pleasers and shit like that. You know, we gotta do the shit for the ladies or whatever. But a lot of fluff out there that's just like, okay, I don't care. You know. Or, is there any? Um, do y'all have any plans to do a video for Close Minds? Yes. There's going to be a video for it. Actually, Jamie approached me about the video. Like, yo, Lex, we need to do a video for this. I was like. Fuck yeah, let's do it. You know what I'm I might have to fly to Detroit to do it. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's where they at. I'm in. I'm still in New York City, man. But Detroit's my like my second home. Word. Right. Word. And um, with with Thriller and Closed Minds, are they a part of a body of work, or you or would you say that these are more like fillers leading up to a project? Oh, those two for sure are going to be on episode three. Those two for sure are going to be on episode three. We're going to, we're going to rock those on episode three. Um, I got a few more songs to do. Episode three is basically almost done. You know what I'm saying? And um, it sounded real good. Uh, people was loving it. Um, what we got so far, the people around me is loving it. So I'm having fun doing it, man. I started doing, well, what started happening to me, man, is that like the pressure of episode one and two doing so well like, oh, what am I going to do for episode three, you know? But I was like, you know what? What I did for episode one and two, I fucking had fun. So I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to have fun, man. Fuck it, you know? But are you are you an artist that, that you know, tends to, not intentionally, but feel like you got to compete with your last um, body of work? Yes. Yes. I, I, I feel like I have to compete with everything. Um, and like you said, um, like for artists who's like on songs together and shit, shouldn't try to kill each other on songs. I disagree. I think that if you're going to be on a song with me, kill me, bro. Destroy me, murder me. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what I'm going to do. You know, um, cause this is, and we're not dissing each other. We're not doing it for the sake of like trying to end each other's career, but that's what's going to make the song all, all the more potent. If we, if we, if we bring it out, you know what I mean? Um, right. yes, I'm competing with myself. Every battle that I've lost against somebody else. So I was uh, every battle I lost to myself is battles I was fighting with somebody else. So I am the only person that I compete to with. Even if we're on a song together, I'm competing with myself. You know what I mean? If I don't like it, it doesn't matter what anybody says. If I think it's trash, it doesn't matter what you say. You can say, "Oh, that shit was crazy," but if I think it was trash, it don't matter. It don't fucking matter. You know what I mean? So yes, I'm competing with myself. Um, this is the shit that makes niggas crazy, though. So. <laughs> This is why I got the goggles on and shit like that because niggas can't see me, you know. Where is there? Is there? Do you have like a a date in mind for episode three? July. We're definitely looking at July right now. So um, very soon, very soon. Because you know, once you you know how a record goes, man. Once you're done with it, a bunch of other bullshit has to happen, which I want no part of. Just call me when it's time to rap, and then I'll meet you at the mailbox. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Word. But um. Yeah, we got a lot of shit going on right now, man. Shows about to start opening up. Um, come like September, hopefully shows will start opening up. Maybe maybe we can get you on something if we in, if we in, in your region. You know what I'm saying? If you're down for that, of course, you know? man. Of course. Word, but yeah, New York is um, 
as you know, we don't do a lot of shows in New York. I think I think the last show I've done in New York was uh, Webster Hall, and that was right right before it closed. Mm. You ever played? You, you ever heard of Webster Hall? Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. I've been to Webster Hall. Webster Hall. Yeah, yeah I, 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 it's a legendary Webster Hall, but I had I'd never been there until I had uh, performed in shit. So, which like a lot of places, I don't really have. And the first concert I ever been to was in 2015 as a Tech Nine concert. Dude. Like I am not like super concert guy, you know. No, I know what you're saying. My my first concert, I wouldn't I wouldn't say Summer Jam because of the weather. It was trash that day. I would say it was the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival when um. Oh wow, you went to you went to one though, dude. Black Star was that was the year Black Star headline. Um, most of them quali. Yeah, yeah. I went in there. Just on some fan shit, because I did it through yeah. Sonic bids to try to perform. I was considered but not chosen. So I'm like, you know what? I'm still gonna go and enjoy the show. I walked out of that and um, Sky Zoo performed. Um, Mr. Mr. C did his thing. Um, Static selected did his thing. I walked out of that that venue I'm like, yo, I wanted to be on that stage so bad. Right, <laughs> right. Like I couldn't turn the rapper. Right there, man. That is fucking huge. Yeah, so I know what you mean. Like I'm not a big, I'm not a big concert pro- and I don't care to sit in, I don't want to sit in the nosebleeds. That's not gonna do right. anything for me. Right. Fuck that shit. Right. I the first concert I went to was a tech nine. I think it was a technician tour. I tell you what, man, this motherfucker tech nine had to be up there at least two hours, dude. Going the whole time. I'm like, I can't fuck with this nigga. I don't know what this nigga on, but he was killing it, dude. Like, I went out for, like, 20 smoke breaks. This nigga was still performing and shit. Live wire, too. I'm like, oh, this guy's... I see why he's so fucking the man right now. You know what I'm saying? Sexy guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell yeah. Sexy guy. Um, But as we get closer to the end of our conversation, Lex, who was your dream collab, and who would be the producer to produce it? Ah... Uh, Damn. I would have to say my dream collab. Yeah. Um, probably Nas, man. I would love to dance with Nas on a song, man. Um, you know what? If I could do a dream, uh, tell me if this counts. I don't know if this counts. But if I could do a dream fucking uh, feature, it would be Nas. And we would remake the song Represent. You ever mm. heard that song? Hell yeah. Fucking song is that's my favorite Nas song like ever, dude. He got so busy on that shit, and I don't even like. We're gonna put this on record too. I don't like Illmatic, man. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for that. Probably gonna lose a couple chicks, but I don't like Illmatic, man. I didn't think Illmatic was dope at all. I like it was written. It yeah, was written, was crazy. It was written I, th- was crazy. I thought that it was written was a better album than um Illmatic. Right. Not, not to discredit Illmatic, but my my Nas album would be it was written. Right. It was written. I think I Am was a dope album too, man. They could be talking, they could be shitting on I Am, bro. Like I Am wasn't dope. That was more of a commercial album, but it was fucking fire, though. It was fucking dope. But yeah, it would be me and Nas, and we would, we would redo Represent. I, I listen to that song to, to this day when I'm fucking like working out and shit, man. Mm. What? What? Like there is a Lex the Hex Master song. If if I could put a producer to produce a record, I'm like, yo, this is a song I, w- I would love to hear from Lexa Hexmaster. It would be you, and the record would have to be produced by Dame Grease. Oh, see, I'm fucking up now, son. I'm <laughs> about Dame Grease. I'm fucking up, bro. I'm fucking all the way up. Yeah, Dame Grease is fucking dangerous, dude. Yo, a lot of niggas don't realize too, man. He produced like 90% of Dark and Hell is Hot. Yeah. He had like one or two joints on there. But that nigga, they, oh man, yeah. Yo, me and Nas and the Dave Grease be fuck that represent shit. <laughs> Dave fucking Grease, dog. He fucking uh, amazing, bro. Yeah, man. That's that's definitely that's definitely a, a combination that I'd like to hear, whether it's just you and Dame Grease or it's a it's a, the, a dream collab but I, I could definitely hear that happen with your style and knowing what he contributed to um it's dark and hell is hot right man we could speak that shit into existence man mm-hmm. i'm speaking into existence right now i'm going to do a track with damn grease before i fucking die 
Word up. Damn. I'm not dying, everybody. I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 gonna do a, a fucking joint with Dan Grease, dude. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. I could see myself on Rough Riders too. Bro, I said the same thing. I'm like, yo, if Rough Riders did a reboot, that would be the label that I would not mind. Streets fuck with Rough Riders, bro. Yeah. Streets fuck with Rough Riders, dude. They said they was doing a reboot. I think Murder Mook was like signed to them at one time, but that yeah, ain't work. it ain't work out. That ain't go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You know, play, but uh, record labels like Rough Riders that's so street and run by street niggas, they need street. They don't need other superstars. You know what I'm saying? Like they need street people, like street like us, like fresh out the motherfucking gate niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's ready to get it, ready to work, not. Mad demands, and I need all yellow M and M's and shit. Like, I need motherfucking. Make sure I got a bag of chips and some water, nigga. And I'm in the studio with it all night. You know what I mean? And creative freedom. And creative freedom. S M M M M. And I give you all the fire you need, bro. But labels don't have a lot of faith in artists anymore, dude. They don't, man. A lot of yeah. fucking out, bro. Niggas as long as you have the faith in yourself, man, then that's, you know, what I mean, no label can can stop that. You know, you're gonna be your biggest fan you're going to be your biggest hater it you know right. it's you you know what i mean you're the one that's putting in the work and that only goes to show how dedicated you are to your craft if you point out every floor you every floor you have oh i don't like the way i set that line i'm gonna have to go back into the studio it's that's not i'm always competing with myself dude like i am my own biggest fucking critic it don't matter if niggas is in the studio losing their mind go oh, that was crazy son if I don't like it, I'm doing it again. Oh, I'm changing that fucking verse. That's just the way it's going down. Word. But um, down. what's next for Lex the Hexmaster in 2021? Um, these shows, man. Doing these shows. Um, more, 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 more guest appearances. You know what I'm saying? More letting people. Everybody around me is like, yo, man, you should start letting people know who you are, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're a very interesting person to know and i don't think so but they seem to think so so just just learning a lot more about me just coming out of my shell a little bit more you know um i, I tend to be believe it or not a very shy person you know um which which led to a lot of bad things in my life but i just learned that um just just giving myself man and just be myself you know and have fun it's gonna be a lot of fun it's gonna be a fun year man 2020 believe it or not with the pandemic and all that shit like that it was actually a great year for me man musically I put out some great music, so a shit ton of records, you know, because everybody's staying home. Um, we're gonna do some um, some virtual shows, some virtual live performances, also, and um, that's it. Sell some fucking records, make some money, man. Bang some hoes. <laughs> Yo, man, there you have it. Yo, Lex, this is something that I do at the end of my episodes. Um, okay. The floor is yours, bro. Promote any and everything you want to um, plug. All right, y'all. Yo. Be on the lookout for that new Closed Minds joint. Check out the Thriller joint. It got a video and all that. The video is doing really well. The single, the, di- the, di- the digital is doing really good. Um, shot the whole shadow on me out there kicking some motherfucking ass from the photography department to the fucking sound department. Shout out to Jake Palumbo. Check out Jake Palumbo, $50 haircut. Make sure you hit up Shadow Army Productions on um, on Instagram to get these new cups that I just posted up. You can check my page for it, which is just dope. Um, and just shout out to Ray Pearson, this motherfucker man, one of the dopest niggas on the East Coast. Uh, a nigga, I gotta get on the track and dance with soon because we gotta get this shit settled once and for all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, we're not doing it like that, y'all. We definitely gonna dance and have some motherfucking fun. That's for goddamn sure. You know what I mean? Um, and just peace of the family, man. The whole East Coast, yo. Word up, Shadow Army's in this bitch, yo. Word, man. And um, and on that note, before I, before I sign off, I want to salute everybody who's been checking in and tuning um tuning into Quarantine and Rap. Whether you're a first time viewer or a returning supporter, I appreciate you. My co-host appreciates you. My producer Sage and Tyler appreciates you. Um, and on that note, the only thing left, make sure y'all check out Closed Minds by Lex the Hex Master feature, well, along with Jamie Madrox of Twisted. And be on the lookout for 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 that shadow that shadow king and bar Christ record. And on that note, right y'all already know how I end my shows, right? Swabby. Yeah. 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 yeah, ladies and gentlemen, all over the world. You know, books. This is.
mobile phone, TV, or PC. I'm on whatever screen you own. Jumping from tabs to apps, I suggest you don't. I promise you'll miss out. On information that is vital, what I do is teach you guess I'm even call them the best. So I'm going viral with idols, it's so classic. Like I said, CDs and vinyls. You already know it's top of my show. Right.